I was about to cut to me in the test and I just have to stop and say, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Forget what it does under the bonnet. The bonnet is just so damn sexy. Yes. Okay, you get the point. It's an emotional piece of product design, but is the Huawei P20 Pro worth its top draw price tag? Beautiful. However you say it, Huawei, Huawei, Huawei. I was first turned onto the company when I was sent an Honor 8 and Honor 8 Pro for review purposes. This coincided with my family and I taking a trip around the world and I ended up ditching my iPhone 7 for the Honor 8 Pro, which took substantially better pictures. And here's the thing, while I use a range of cameras for my YouTube channel, 99% of my social media photos and videos originate in my phone. It's just so much easier to pull the phone out from my pocket, grab a shot and upload it on one device. I just bought a Mate 10 Pro during our visit to Tokyo when Huawei announced the P20 Pro. Arigato with AI and the three Leica camera setup. But luckily for me, I was due a contract renewal back in the UK, and that's why I've now got two of the most feature-rich camera phones on the market to compare for you. Let's quickly do that. They both share the same octa-core Kiron 970 chipset, a graphics processor, six gig of RAM, and 128 gig of built-in storage. No micro SD slots, unfortunately. There are flagships from other brands that offer more grunt, Samsung's Stellar S9 Plus, and of course the Razer phone with its top of the line Snapdragon 835 chip uh, and eight gig of RAM. But the bottom line here is that I've been hugely impressed by processor intensive tasks on both the Mate 10 Pro and P20 Pro. Gaming being one of the best examples. In PUBG, all graphics settings are maxed out on the P20 Pro. Ultra HD is listed as coming soon, so this is the max I'm permitted, and the gameplay feels buttery smooth. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Back to the comparison with the Mate 10 Pro, Huawei's proprietary eMotion UI is a more recent build on the P20 Pro, 8.1 as opposed to 8.0 on the Mate 10 Pro. And it's 8.1 on the P20 Pro for Android, 8.0 on the Mate 10 Pro. Both have the same best-in-class monster 4,000 milliamp hour batteries. Battery life on both devices is outstanding. There are a few minor tweaks in the 8.1 UI, some based around the dual fingerprint and face ID security that the uh, P20 Pro offers. But frankly, the most important differences are to be seen in the camera department. And we'll get to that, the meat of this review, in a moment. I want to use the Mate 10 Pro to illustrate what it is about the design of the P20 Pro that made me react in the way I did during its unboxing. Hello, gorgeous. With my Honor 8, I'd grown accustomed to rear-mounted fingerprint ID. But for ease and speed, the P20 Pro's facial unlocking is just off the dial impressive. Huawei have made a lot of the speed they've achieved with their face unlock. I look at the phone, either with my glasses and cap on or off, and I'm in in what feels like a nanosecond. To me, the front-mounted fingerprint ID on the P20 Pro seems like a waste of screen estate, but I don't care because the face unlock is just excellent. Nice little design feature to note, you can choose to have the notch uh, where the front-facing camera lives visible or not. It's the subtleties of the P20 Pro's design that define it the curve of the edges for a more sleek and comfortable feel in the hand. Comparing Mate 10 and P20 Pros again, both have OLED screens, but it's a slightly larger 6.1 inch 2240 by 1080 res screen for the P20 Pro. It's really hard to put into words, but the P20 Pro is just better looking. It's a more premium offering than its marginally less exotic older sibling, the Mate 10 Pro. Most people thinking of purchasing the P20 Pro will be doing so based on its camera performance. So let's focus on that. That three Leica lens sensor arrangement brought a lot of attention for Huawei's headline handset. Here's how they stack up. A 20 megapixel monochrome sensor at f1.6 aperture. 
an 8 megapixel telephoto at f2.4 with optical image stabilization. Now, this offers an astonishing three times optical zoom and a five times hybrid zoom. A three times optical zoom is a significant innovation for a smartphone. You'll notice there's more noise at five times zoom, however, and more still at 10 times, but still, this phone's zoom must be a candidate for its standout most impressive feature. And then there's the 40 megapixel RGB sensor at f1.8. This is designed to keep noise levels down in the image, uh, and as well as a big megapixel hit, it offers very reliable low light performance. On the front of the phone is a 24 megapixel front-facing selfie camera. It's quite brilliant. I do a lot of selfies and the camera is very strong. I'm not convinced, however, by the AI beautification enhancements or 3D lighting effects. It's no biggie, I just don't use them. Huawei have made a lot of the AI in this phone. It helps with image categorization and the automatic suggestion of camera settings based on the camera's ability to work out what you're shooting from 500 available scenarios. It's doing it here, recognizing greenery and then enhancing the greens in the image. I'm not sure about this. It's nice that the camera recognizes, say, a blue sky, but I'm not convinced I like the addition of the oversaturated super blue hue to this picture. Ultimately, however, you have the control. Like most settings, it can be switched off. And the AI offers other features I find more useful, like image stabilization, which is really good when taking a night shot. The camera's interface is extremely intuitive. The 8.1 EMUI offers simple slide and select access to all photographic and video options, which can't be said for the Mate 10 Pro's 8.0 version. There's also 960 frames per second slow-mo, but that's at 720p, which is useless for me, as I generally want the option to incorporate my phone videos into my YouTube projects. In practice, I find that video is never the strong suit of smartphones. But nevertheless, I've captured several lifesaver sequences for my YouTube channel when I couldn't get to a superior piece of filming equipment. This footage from the beach in Tarifa offers similar color response to the phone's still image mode. There are no obvious visual artifacts and it's quite steady considering it was shot handheld on a very windy day. And the P20 offers more than just standard HD. There's FHD Plus at a very satisfying 18x9, 2160 by 1080 and there's UHD 4K, although this top-end resolution doesn't feature the handy 4D predictive focus feature, in which the camera auto-focuses on multiple moving subjects. I've found that sometimes the smart in smartphones can be a bit obnoxious. Look at the AI's preference for an obsessively blue sky. Also, the background blurring effects found in portrait and aperture modes. But along with a fully customizable Pro Photo mode, the P20 Pro gives you complete control, enabling you to dumb down its inner camera expert and take back control if you so desire. Buying a AAA smartphone at this price point is always going to be a tricky decision and a personal one. But for me, it ticks all my boxes. But what do you think? Are you a P20 Pro owner? Are you thinking of buying one? Do you hate it? Whatever your thoughts, let me know in the comments section. And I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe.